Every week it hits different. Hello and welcome to another Woodshop Podcast with Mike Coffey of Coffee Custom Builds, Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, and Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all as well as the podcast on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 151 of Another Wooden Shop Podcast, where this week it is my honor to welcome our guest. Just like Prometheus gave fire to men, our guest gave woodworking to mere mortals. He is best described as the Bob Ross of woodworking, making projects for over 40 years, content for over a decade, and inspiring thousands of makers around the world. Steve Ramsey's here. Hey, Ooh, guys. Steve. Oh. And I'm on episode on 151. It's my favorite 51. number. Hey. Oh, well, look at that. That's great. I think thousands, thousands, <laughs> thousands might be low on the uh, inspira- inspiring uh, woodworkers. Tens number. of I think thousands. That might be, a, yeah, <laughs> be, like, be low. No, uh, big thank you to Steve. For I like the, the Prometheus reference. That was nice. That was because so, so, yeah, because the woodworking from mere mortals. I, I, get it, I, get it. I get it. Boo! <laughs> no, I'm just it's gonna funnier be, uh, when you explain it, Mike. We all know <laughs> it. <laughs> no, uh, big big thanks to Steve for coming on the show. I wanted to thank our patrons real quick. Big thank you to uh, Nick Brim Woodworking for becoming a patron. Uh, Bill Parker Combs <laughs> for becoming a patron. Yeah, I think somebody <laughs> might have lapsed their payment. Welcome no, back. Uh, yeah, welcome back, Nick Brim. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to thank all of our VIP patrons. That's Alex Copajohns, Bill Burkle, Braden with Little Bug, Daniel Bryson, Jacob Miller, Justin with Calvary Customs, Christian Tongue, Malcolm at ba- Bossa Nova Woodworks, Matt Maynard, Max and Mindy Coons, Melinda Coons, uh, Michael Flickinger, Michael Lydon, Scott Holland, Square Splinter, Steve Laterola, and that is all of our v- VIP patrons. You that guys is are a awesome. sexy list. That's a great Woo. list. A great list. Uh, anyways, Yo, we got Steve, Steve Ramsey's, Ramsey's on the show, <laughs> oh so God. we can't be talking too much about it. Yeah, thank God. We got to talk about that. So, I how mean, many? We, we bumped Lizzo for him. <laughs> right. How many <laughs> restaurants do you own now? Steve. Uh, they're, they're all in england though wrong, wrong right. <laughs> is, this, is this the money guy dan did you notice how he didn't hop on the podcast and go this is rubbish yeah i would, I would just call people a muppet that was a my muppet. favorite ex- <laughs> muppet. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was here i heard where eddie van halen not eddie van halen wolfgang van halen apparently has got a pretty funny twitter account but he recently called somebody a grape who i saw that and someone was like really uh, funny. someone's like they were trying to like call him out. use your name that name to become popular or famous or something like that is my name you grape yeah i love that because uh, it's just like it's so, it's so off the wall it's like it, it sort of fits <laughs> it's good you're dumb as a grape or dumb as a bag of hair whatever yeah. works no uh look we can't waste time, Steve, because we got Steve on the show. So I wanted to talk. To you. So I wanted. To, no, I wanted to ask you. Uh, you know, who who are you? We all know who you are, but I. I how does Steve Ramsey discuss describe Steve Ramsey? What What would you say? Who are I you? I make been making woodworking videos on YouTube for a hell of a long time, and I have a channel devoted to beginning woodworking. I'm your I'm your woodworking gateway drug. Ooh, yeah you are ooh, true that very accurate true that you're the weed of yeah, uh, yeah. i've been yeah, i've been watching that. steve since he had casper as a sponsor and he <laughs> was Yo, doing man. i was in thro- like every year i was like pumped because you would put out like a really great halloween episode oh man i'm glad you watch those those are like my <laughs> least watched videos those were my I, favorite I do, I do the people who watch them love them and i've been doing them for this will be my 15th year doing those and wow. i love doing wow. them. this one those are my favorite videos is my favorite time of year you know it's yeah, so I love it's them. so funny because my my buddy jake actually referred to you as the bob ross of woodworking today and i was like <laughs> i'm using that in the intro that makes more sense than anything else because you you are the like oh, we're gonna put a happy little pocket screw here and <laughs> you know like 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 you you took the base level like no not you can take a no knowledge person as far as woodworking goes and and make them into a maker make them into a woodworker yeah. like you, you have been doing that since the beginning you're probably the most known for that um and i mean it's, it's, the numbers speak for themselves look at how many videos you created how many uh, subs you have you have been here for a long time and you've been 
at the, the you know the beginning of the journey the woodworking journey yeah. uh, which is a phrase we love on here for <laughs> a lot of people you know uh, including us yeah. i mean we've all watched you for years so it's it's really cool to have you on now man i've That's been watching dad. since it's way really before cool. i ever thought about doing anything in my garage back when it was in black and white yeah yeah <laughs> yeah we used to have to black film and white everything. YouTube. yeah I used to have Remember to get the days. film developed and you would have to send it into you. It, it, was, it was a silent <laughs> film. Like, you could run something through the planer and then it would go to a black screen and says planer noises. I got to right. wrap this. The stage coach is going to be here any minute. I can't, I can't miss it. <laughs> this is ludicrous. No, I mean, yeah, you've been doing this for a long time. I mean, I think it's safe. To, I mean, I know that I start learned woodworking through content. I didn't go to, go yeah. to a traditional school or, I mean, I learned it through YouTube and Instagram and, that's where I learned woodworking. And you were one, I mean, if I go back to my very, if I go back to my subscription list and sort by earliest, you're the, the earliest. I mean, that's just a fact. You're the Didn't earliest you do subscription. I don't know. I just made that up, but uh, <laughs> no, no, I know for, I know that like, like for my, for, for you're no one one's going to fact earliest. check. Yeah. Good luck. I mean, the same, I am your biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, going back, I mean, getting going it's true you're the you're the you're the yeah. marijuana of woodworking like yeah, you get man. everyone going and get everyone rolling and rocking and rolling i mean <laughs> you're, the, you're the first yeah you're the edibles right. of uh no it's it's really it really is true i mean you know, there's a lot of i mean I, I learned how to make a mallet from you and oh, cool. that's something i did i mean that's just a fact i learned how to make a mallet from you and uh that's some, that's one everybody of my needs a mallet things. Everyone needs a mallet. And I, I did yeah. that for a while. It was a solid six months stint where I just made a bunch of mallets, you know, <laughs> and all these different things. You can you can learn different things from all these different projects. So everything everything feeds I on itself as just you learn more and more stuff. I mean, there's no reason to uh, one it's, up. Why, why are you uh, flexing? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody ordered it on Etsy, so I had to. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but no. what you're saying is really the, the most humbling part to me about what I do, because it, it didn't, I didn't realize kind of my place in all of this until, you know, in the last few years. And when I hear stories like that, or like when I was at Workbench Con and people would, would say similar stories is like, wow, I got started woodworking because I watched one of your videos, you know, 10 years ago or whenever. And it's just amazing because I, at the time, I would have never really realized that that was kind of a thing. And so now, to me now, I have to, I feel like I take my role even more seriously than I did years ago. Cause now yeah. I think, oh, actually I, I feel like I'm sort of making an impact, which I didn't really realize I was before. Well, you're hearing that same through line regularly now. So it's got to yeah. feel I mean, one great, also humbling, but also you have a very clear like guideline for what you can, are doing with your content right. and how to guide that. I mean, it's really got to make things like I wish I had an identity like that within content or with what I'm doing with my content. I wish I knew like what my, how people view my channel and what, what I need to make my content towards. Yeah, I just think that, that there needs to be about. somebody who can offer beginning woodworkers, a starting point. Who's not a beginning woodworker themselves. I mean, there's plenty of these, Hey, come along with my journey as I learn woodworking channels. But I think if somebody yep. really is interested in learning that it's a, good idea to have somebody who at least could show you all of this beginning stuff and for me it's like super rewarding to strip everything back and every time I build a project to remember wait a second maybe somebody doesn't exactly know how to put a drill bit into a chuck or you know these are the really basic things super fundamental that, stuff yeah. that people ask questions about and I think that it's easy to, easy to overlook that. And for me, that's it's really fun to kind of think like that. Every time I make a video, what would be some of the questions somebody would ask who's never, you know, held a screwdriver in their life? What would be some of the things it, that they, they might be interested in? It's so important to think that way too, because I mean, I, I mean, this is, I, mean, I, I do what I do for, I do this for a living now. I make furniture for a living. I don't think about that. And it's really it's really to my detriment because I'll, I'll start doing things. I'm like, Oh yeah, this, you get to the point where it's just not relatable for some people. You're starting to share stuff and you're like, no one even like maybe 1% of even in the woodworking world does this kind of stuff. So um, that being thinking that way, keeping it, <clears throat> everyone's doing that stuff. It's the kind of things where if you do this for a living, you don't even think that you're doing it, but then you realize, Oh, I just did that like 50 times a day. Of course it's important to talk about that to people because it is such a basic yeah, I don't want to use the basic because it almost sounds diminutive. I, it's such a 
it's it's a thing you do so often you don't think about it as such an important it's like thing. a muscle you reflex do it so often or it's, a, yeah it's like muscle muscle memory, memory. Like, yeah, yeah like something you don't you you do so often it is obviously important because you do it so often but you take advantage of the value of it because you do it so often you become complacent with that action but then yeah you realize and, yeah there's way more people who don't know how to do that than do know how to do that yeah and for us it becomes second nature because we do that so often and for the vast majority of people the most basic tasks that we perform without thinking about are completely alien tasks because they've never done even cut a board in half before right. most people have never done that and i run so, into stuff like that every day with uh, the guy i have working in my shop he's very new to woodworking and i'll give him a task and he'll be like you really got to explain <laughs> to me what you're talking right. about because yeah. and i don't even realize it because like like we were talking about it's just like muscle memory you do it all the time you don't yep. even think about it wow yep. yeah yeah, it's yeah. Huge. so I, I just think it's important that you know I fulfill that role and it, it can be a little limiting for me at times, but I just have to keep reminding myself, well, this is, this is what I do. This is, these are the people that I want to reach. And I know people are going to kind of graduate from my videos after a while, but they, sometimes they come back and watch them. And plus not I have this guy <laughs> That's great. and I have videos kind of exploring some other topics I like to do. And I've got Halloween videos. So <laughs> th there's that. And there's always something give, you can give learn. me all the Halloween videos, Steve. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm yeah. glad that you watched those. Cause there's always some quick little yeah, tip, little bit of insight or something like, Oh, I never thought to use that like that. You know, like, mm. I don't know that a battery on a drill could be a hammer. Like, that's cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. We but all there's know always, that. There's always something, you know, uh, that you you can see in your video or any other person and you're like wow i never thought to do that so you can never discount that like oh well that content's below me because i'm already at this level it's like well you know you might be at that level but you may have not gotten all of the basics um yeah. and i think calling them basics is fine mike because it's like you said yeah. it's the it, it is the basis of all of our knowledge is i have that's a, how we learned everything a series on my channel just called basics and it explores the basics of using a jigsaw <clears throat> the basics of using and i try to break it down and some of those i'm trying to like even remake again with even better information now uh and but those are really your... those are really popular for people i mean i've got it here's like the the tools you need as if you're just starting woodworking here's i think what you need just to get started and because it, I, I think if I was learning woodworking, and there's so much information out there at all different points, it, it would be really important for me to have an entry level, an entry point, a place where I could start from and, and look at a channel and go, oh, I can see this channel is clearly for beginning woodworkers. Hey, that's me. And look at this. There's a there's a playlist right at this, the top that says start here with an arrow yep. pointing to it. <laughs> and here are the tools and here's how to use these things. Here's what how to pick wood, you know, all of these kind of things. And, and I really enjoy enjoy. And that's the that. basis for your uh, what's it, the weekend woodworker course weekend woodworker course. Yeah. yeah. So can, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? Like how that. Yeah, I'd love to hear more videos? about that. Yeah, I mean, that really evolved from the limitations of YouTube, because I know that teaching on YouTube is good, but there's the limitations are that I can't really get too involved in what I'm teaching. And I thought to expand on this entry level kind of concept of start here and you can work your way up to this point. The only way I could do that is on a course where I, and I wanted the course to be a fully completable course. It's not just like, here's some projects you can do. It's like, okay, first course, you're going to learn how, you're going to need a workbench, but I'm going to assume. The BMW. Yeah, the, yeah, the BMW and thousands of people have made that workbench. And I'm going to assume that you have nothing except you're going to have the tools I recommend. You're going to have a circular saw and a miter <laughs> saw to begin with and so here's how you can make a workbench before you do anything do this and you could do this on the floor you can do it on your driveway wherever at least and then you get that and then from there it can move on to okay now the next project will be here's how to make a a little side table using just a miter saw and boards that you can get at home depot and so then it progresses this way up through six or seven projects Till you get to the final course and or the final project in the course where you've learned step by step how to use a table saw and, and all of the, the kind of basic 
power tools needed for your most basic kind of power tool based workshop and so you know i like the idea that it's it's completable and that you can actually get a certificate at the end of it you know we give away badges and stuff and people <laughs> post their projects and so that was really important to me to just to have that one resource for people to get started that's awesome so cool very cool and it's less than six thousand plants i'm assuming right in that one class 16 16 000, 16 16 000. <laughs> less than 16 000. so oh, you can't actually complete Ted, the list by chance oh god <laughs> so dumb. i'm sorry I, I apologize yeah so i did a i did like this expose on ted's woodworking years ago this is probably in like 2009 or something because yeah, i don't really think i've seen this it was like so i had this. this all it was all on my second channel i had and it was all so I, I dove into like, who is this Ted That's guy? That's the Steve Where Ramsey Plus, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. It used to be called Mere Minutes and it, now it's plus because everybody has a plus. In the future, everybody will have a plus for 15 minutes. But <laughs> so <laughs> I got into this Ted's woodworking scam and I'm like, what is this thing? How is this everywhere? How is this legal? <laughs> and so well, first of all, I was finding out, is there a Ted? And so I, I Googled uh, the address of where they give where it is. And if it's just a non-existent address, it doesn't exist anywhere. And then I did like reverse image search. The guy is just a stock photo, Ted, he doesn't exist. And so I went through all of this and I bought this thing just to see what was in there. And mostly it's just a bunch of like photocopied plans from the 1950s, popular mechanics, and, and it's just garbage in there. And it's just, a list of folders because this was originally like a cd-rom or something you know it was just a list of <laughs> folders with with just junk in there now it's a hundred thousand accounts on instagram oh it's all it is well and so this is this is what led me to finding out well, how has this become such a thing because it's an it's one of these affiliate programs which mm -hmm. is just a multi-level marketing scheme basically and they it's all from this company called ClickBank. ClickBank is the largest company that does all of this affiliate sales stuff. And that's their number one, their number one seller is Ted's Woodworking. And so you can wow. become like this affiliate and then they encourage you, here's the videos you can use. You should see some of the videos that they've made that are just direct word to word by word copies of <laughs> videos that I've made. It's just amazing oh, wow. Oh, wow. how they do that. And then they, <clears throat> they just spam everywhere. And then there's all these variations of it. Now you'll see like wood pre, which it looks like wood pricks, which is probably more appropriate yeah, to what accurate. it is. <laughs> and, then, and there's, there's like wood glut. And uh, so all of these are just like oh. keywords I have to put and block them on my YouTube channel because they just, it just will overrun it. You know, I've blocked so many of those accounts on Instagram. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It, it's uh, yeah. You'll see these accounts cause they'll, they'll, on Instagram, they'll have like a hundred thousand followers or something, you know, there's no comments because they're all followers that, that you can buy. Mm -hmm. And then they steal everybody's videos and then they just put them on there, you know, woodworking joy or something is the name mm -hmm. of the channel. And I think, wow, how are people following this? But well, it's not really people <laughs> following it. It's fake followers and all roads lead to Ted's woodworking. And <laughs> that's where they're trying to make their money. Dang it, Ted. Trash. And this thing's it's been going trash. on for like 20 years now. It's yeah. crazy. <clears throat> That's wild. Crazy. MySpace times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, so also I, I mentioned it in the pre-show, but I wanted to like talk about how, I mean, you, you said that YouTube is a great place to teach. Obviously it doesn't, it's not great for the super ultra long format. So how, I mean, real kind of deep dive, how do you utilize youtube to push traffic to your classes outside of the obvious hey i'm doing a class join this class yeah mostly the strategies well mostly i try to get people to sign up for my tool list which is uh, you can get started it, it woodworking i have a i had this idea of like if i can get people started in woodworking for under a thousand dollars that seems like I would want to start woodworking. I mean, it seems reasonable. It's getting harder and harder. I update that list every month. I try to keep wow. it up to date with, because it's it's hard. These tool companies, yeah. they change the models and they're constantly <clears throat> yeah, yeah, like, oh, look, my table saw has got a new hat on it now. It's different. And, and, <laughs> so, and so 
it's hard to keep that, but I basically do. And, and it's just showing people how you can get, you know, started with brand new tools for that. And I also tell them how really even a better way to do it is to buy some used tools because used tools are a great way to go. You can get some great used tools for a lot less than the newer tools. And in a lot of cases, they're better. Yep. I mean, it's just a motor that spins something really. And so Absolutely. that's the, right. that's the idea is I usually try to get people there because once they're, they download that list, then they've opted in for me to send them an email saying, thank you for getting my list. By the way, I have mm -hmm. courses that you might be interested in and you can get started in woodworking. And so that's been really successful that way. That's awesome. awesome. And then you also awesome. have you, well, what used to be WTS now is creative culture podcast. The right, creative so culture brand. podcast. Yep. Yeah. So it um can you talk a little bit about that? And <clears throat> do you have any other, I guess, revenue streams or we could talk about it or <laughs> you know, something else you're doing on top of all of this? Is there a TV uh, show? The, no, I don't I wouldn't do TV. Mm -hmm. they, there's well, I mean, you can reach a lot more people on YouTube than you can on television these days. They're not really that's much. true. Yeah, that's so it doesn't really need to be true. forty people's hands in the pot. <laughs> it doesn't really have that like cachet i guess it once had you know now it kind of is is limited to a very certain demographic of people who would even watch television especially a woodworking <clears throat> type show right. but um yeah i do the the courses i do the the creative culture podcast and yeah thanks for mentioning that because yeah i did just change which, the name of it <laughs> which yeah is, which you just rebranded like in the last it, week or just so right? last week yeah yeah it's on a lark i'm trying breaking to breaking news yeah you heard it yeah. here first well it, it explains exactly what the show is rather than the wts which is like what's this shit i don't know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. don't, and so hopefully that that helps but i love doing the podcast it's fantastic oh and then i have my newsletter too the newsletter is pretty good um uh do that once a month and i'd like to talk to you about go. uh just running an ad for me through your newsletter is that yeah. something yeah. Why, you take that off reach out here. To? You, you got it <laughs> all right cool uh, just i want i just want a direct link to my etsy store if that's cool <laughs> um but yeah that's, a, that's pretty much that's what i do the, the courses are definitely the main focus of my business and then youtube um is more of I, you know youtube i have a, a interesting relationship with youtube over the years because now I'm not as concerned with YouTube as I once was. I think that it's more, I, I have the, I've adopted kind of this Zen attitude towards YouTube of like, I'll post videos when I can, when I want, and when I'm inspired to do something and I'm not going to obsess over it anymore. I think I, I, I have enough, I get enough views. I have enough followers. I don't need any more. I don't, you know, <laughs> You're content with your content. Yeah, I'm I'm totally, totally content with it. Yeah. And I, I like that because it puts me in a good space to really produce the kind of content that I want. It kind of reminds me of yeah. what it was when I first started YouTube. I could just kind of make any types of videos and, and post them on there. And it was just a lot of fun. And I'm I'm kind of regaining awesome. that now. Yeah, you're not 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 a great analogy, but you're not scratching and clawing for the growth. You're really, your right. entire focus is on making good content, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Quality uh, over quantity, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for the Steve Ramsey take on Steve Ramsey. We really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I think we're going to jump quickly into kind of what's on our bench. It's a little segment we do over here and, uh, you know, Dan sings about it what's on my bench that's dan believe it or not uh he's <laughs> voice of an angel i'm gonna actually throw it to dan first because i don't know what dan's got going on in his bench and i'd like hey, what do you got know. going on oh uh, well i've actually had a pretty interesting week you know aside from the Etsy orders which i always do which i always talk about uh yada yada broken record um so this past weekend, I had Nick Brim and Braden from Little Bug Woodworking mm -hmm. over at my shop, and they were kind of hanging out and helping me out. Braden, I had Braden working on, uh, well, I didn't have him working on it. He was working on a bigger panel glue up, and uh, he'd never done a panel glue up that big. So I was like, you know, come on over to my shop, and I'll give you a hand. And Nick mm -hmm. wanted to come over and help out, and I was like, heck yeah. So 
Nick actually dove into my CNC, my my uh, journeyman, and he upgraded it to the spindle nice. all by Finally, himself. After years. I was like, Thank Brain you, Nick. Nick. <clears throat> oh, Nick did. No, Nick, Nick did. did. Oh, yeah. Nick Nick's did. Got, Nick's well, got my, a huge set of brains on him. He's, he's, he, Nick could figure it out. He really does. Nick's, Nick's great. <laughs> yeah. But it was all made uh, possible because Onefinity sent me that, that new beefy Z slider that I ordered way back whenever it uh, was announced. Um, so we got that all going and I was super hyped to come out into the shop on Monday and have two CNCs going. I was going to be like pumping stuff out and the controller on the journeyman took a, oh. took a poo. Yeah. So I got to get that replaced. <laughs> that oh, that's stinks. on the journeyman. Not Maybe on I the, should turn off. Not on the small one. It was on the big Yeah. One. The journeyman controller oh. took a poo. So my woodworker is now the main CNC until that new hey, controller comes you got in. A CNC so right I haven't now. been able to use the. Yeah, I'm so 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 thankful that I have a CNC because I would be up shit creek without a paddle or whatever my grandma used to say. Um, yeah, so that was the big paddle. thing this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I I just want to rant a little bit. You know, I love Etsy. I love it. Uh, you know, it, it makes a lot of things possible for me. So I'm, I really but, appreciate it. But, but man, I, w I really wish people would read product descriptions. You know, I, we put those there for a reason. I've had, <laughs> wait, wait a second. You're telling me you want people to read. Yeah, I know. I know that's a big ask. But, <laughs> we make videos because they um, don't read. <laughs> so I, it's <laughs> a good point, Pete. Um, <laughs> so I, I had a run of those, those seat tables that I make, right? And I've had three people return them because they don't fit their couch. And in the description, there's uh, a very clear, you know, set of dimensions on, on how big it is. And, and I also say there, if these don't work for you, let me know. We can work something out. And, you know, if it's it, if it's within reason, I will give you an extra inch. <laughs> I'll give you an extra inch if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> to make it work, you know. Came and, for the C table, stayed for the extra inch. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I had people return them, you know, and you know, with it being on Etsy, you 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 really have no choice but to just take the return and eat the cost. It's, it's a real bummer. Wow, but well, it is what it is. Well, who would buy something like them? that? And why would they buy something like that and not measure it? I mean, I don't know. They're not cheap. They're not cheap. Yeah, yeah exactly. you should be charging them for the return. Yeah. Standard. I'm stand making. No, the standard policy that like. Etsy has you accept as like, hey, you should have a return policy. Here's one we suggest. It I have it on all my stuff now. It basically says this item is eligible for return if the uh, user pays for the shipping back. Yeah, so then the you users pay the shipping them. back. And then within reason, obviously, because if it's damaged, it's it's a bit. So they are paying for that, or you're deducting it. Yes, I'm not. Know. I'm not okay. paying for that. Okay, I, thought... I say you send it back to me in the box that I sent it to you in, and I'll give you a okay. refund. Oh, I mean that's sure. only fair. That's something. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's anyway, that. I'm sorry, dude. That is that. Um, yeah, I think we got about ten more of those tables to make. It'll be nice when they're all caught up. Well, you only have to set, make seven um... now. <laughs> send those ones out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well the the ones that we have to make are actually special orders so oh the the ones that got sent back aren't going to work because those are the <laughs> standard option so yeah whatever uh i'd like to hear what steve's working on so same steve same well what have you been see. working on lately literally this is more of a metaphor of what's on my bench it could be anything you could be working say, on well, in the garden are we literally or metaphorically because metaphorically. literally there's just a whole bunch of shit on my workbench right now <laughs> talk about that but and then on a broader too. sense <laughs> i am working on a uh, a little garden bench that i i knew it had something to do with gardens yeah i'm calling it the meditation bench i like to have oh. a name for something zen that bench con conjures up yeah it's the, my zen meditation bench and so the is you go out there and you just sit and so the the i made one of these last <clears throat> summer it was uh i was just kind of prototyping some a few projects and the idea then was i wanted to see if it was possible to make some really cool projects using nothing but just a circular saw a drill and basically that would be it a jigsaw and so i made this bench and it was really really cool and so now i'm looking at it thinking hmm what if i can make that same bench but make it a little bit better 
And so that's what I'm going to work on now with a full video instead of just, I just shot a short at the time. When I, and the, the whole conceit of this is that you could make the whole thing out of just like four two by fours and three or three two by fours and two one by fours. And that's all you need. Nice. And so it's, it's an easy, simple thing to make, but this time it'll be a little bit fancier than the is last this, time. Is this the bench that you made a couple years ago? And I remember that, you painted it like a rainbow color or there oh was... well there i so yeah. am i remembering this correctly <laughs> well, I, I paint things a lot of different colors this one i painted <laughs> orange and okay and i've made a purple bench and last year i made and this was a project that i made just a month ago I i'm made, seeing blue and green too so i i made a rainbow colored shop stool okay, yes so this was okay. last summer and then i redid that just a few weeks ago uh with just a, a plain finish on it yeah that was the that was just a short is all i did was that rainbow bench and it it just generated a whole ton of angry people that don't like rainbows oh jeez. Oh, okay <laughs> yeah. we had a friend paint uh walnut yellow once and uh well he's we unfriended no him. with us <laughs> <laughs> But see, I you love painted paint projects. No, you would never paint that. But see, pine, for me, pine is, I think it's a great wood to work with. And I think it's an underrated wood. And people think that, oh, it's cheap. It's, but I think it's beautiful. And especially if you can find pine that has some really interesting knots or something really kind of that other people might throw back in the bin and think it's ugly and just kind of highlight those. I think it's really cool looking wood plus it's cheap and it's great for painted projects and i love painted projects mm -hmm. especially outdoor projects nothing protects wood yeah i was just gonna paint. i was gonna say that i remember <laughs> you saying that in a video once that nothing yeah. protects outdoor projects better than paint i mean and we that, paint that's... our houses i mean that's <laughs> why we do it you know and it's i should great. put no never mind i wasn't gonna say that never mind you can't paint your couches <laughs> i was gonna talk about putting an oil finish on the outside of my house but never mind <laughs> I'll let that go. Just halcy on the whole thing. That's it. Anything else? No, well, those are what's. That's pretty much what's on my bench. And I'm trying to organize my shop. I, I'm <laughs> trying to finally, you know, damn it, get this place organized. And I, I'm in this real. The last couple of years, I've been in this real <laughs> minimalist kind of phase of of my life, and I, I just want to get rid of things, and I, I just want to like strip everything down to the most bare essentials of what I need. And so I've gotten rid of in my shop. I no longer have a a planer. I don't have a joiner. I don't have a bandsaw. I feel like everything is going to oh. be very very simple, and so that's why I have now. I'm trying to get go through the cabinets and just remove the stuff that no longer that no longer sparks joy get it out of here be gone and then i have all this free space and i, I just I, I love working in a shop like that that everything is simple oh i can respect that i hate a messy shop yeah that's why i always i always recommend people is like clean up your shop when you leave it for the day <laughs> yeah. It sucks yeah. to walk in and have the sawdust and, and just crap. You're like, oh, this is not good. I, I feel Dan's like I'm being like, personally attacked. <laughs> Dan. Dan. The guy that walks back in his, in his home with like sawdust all over. Oh, God. Shaking it off. Oh, he, he blows himself off. Yeah, in the hallway. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Your poor wife. Pete, what um, do you got going on this week? So uh, this week was, uh, it was a bit of a wash for me. So um last it's week about time yeah huh it's been a while uh, since my you monthly wash <laughs> so we actually we had a little uh pet incident last week after the podcast That's right. um my cat binks our lovely girl uh she was in here in a in the office with me and i had like gotten up in my chair and next thing i know she is fully flat to the floor full feral like ready to attack me and then does what yeah the, the, the sweetest her? cat ever who won uh she did that <laughs> night <laughs> oh really but basically i i think what may have happened is i i may have rolled my chair back uh onto her and she just got scared oh, like never before i mean this cat has like i can pick her up i can shake her <laughs> not that i shake my cat but you know like i can right. pick her I up, she hangs up in, the, in the shop with me you know yeah, i think i know what the problem is now <laughs> <laughs> like 
she hangs out in a shop with me even when the tools are running sometimes like she wow. she's great you know she doesn't like the saws and planers but if the laser's running or if i'm like sanding or whatever she's fine um so we were kind of dealing with that because like it it's a pet um if i remember correctly you have a cat right steve i've got yep. two cats yeah you got two cats. Co cobra, cobra and bubbles that's right and bubbles yeah, yeah they're, they're brother and sister so you know like pets are family and unfortunately yeah. sometimes we care about them like a little too much so i have i was like heartbroken because this cat like we literally had to lock her up in uh one of the bathrooms with litter box for like the last week we what? took her to the vet because she was still attacking us and hissing and and or not attacking just like us, she was started hissing. like that and just like that sudden... so i think she got hurt and that was her pain response oh, so no. the next day she was still hissing we got her trapped in a carrier took it to the vet they numbed her you know they gave her a bunch of painkillers and stuff and then then they gave her some anti-anxiety stuff and basically long story short she was like doped up and still not herself we tried to let her out uh on monday but she was still coming off of her opioids that they gave her i guess <laughs> um yeah so i've been a nervous wreck like this is family oh, and man. it's like a, my child and i was just like you know it's a pet it hurt it hurt my heart that she was hurt and I could not focus on anything the whole weekend. We also were supposed to have a uh, wedding and I ended up staying home with her just to like feed her, change the box, everything like that. So I was a mess the whole weekend. I didn't eat, I uh, stopped drinking. <laughs> Fun fact, Dan, <laughs> basically I had like two drinks in the last week. Um, Dan and I were That's trying to get, get our, still <laughs> going from er every day to like <laughs> two drinks in the last uh, week. It's pretty good. That's um, pretty dang I, good. I lost nine that pounds since last Sunday. Wow. Not this, oh, sorry, not this what? last Sunday, the Sunday before that. Because like telling me all I got to do is run over my cat and I can lose weight. Don't, I don't <laughs> know. But I've just been like so stressed and not really doing much. Is and, she like, doing any doing better now? She is. She's doing fantastic now. Tomorrow we're probably going to let her out and let her just, you know, have but the you house think again. She's, she's calmed back to normal. Totally. Like we're in, the, in oh, that good. bathroom uh, a couple times a day, like just hanging out with her playing and stuff. I'll so tell you something. Good. Wow. I know this. Yeah, if, if your cat's anything like mine, it can hold a grudge like a dog <laughs> cool. if you run over the the tail of a dog like he, he'll like yelp or show yelp or whatever and then like five minutes later hey bud what's going on cats yep. no i That's... i stepped on paco's tail once or something he hated me for a week man <laughs> they hold That's why grudges we for like a week you know it's been a week now We're like okay tomorrow let's see let's let her play around we might still keep her there at night uh just to see because she gets more feisty and playful at night so we're like let's just ease into this but anyways because of that i didn't do a lot of stuff in a shop uh worked on a couple projects we we're doing some custom coasters we got a bunch of orders um from the craft fair that we did a couple weeks ago so we we're just fulfilling them uh emma's been helping me out with nice. um, dialing in the laser i actually got some new lenses for my laser which i'm super excited about so now i have three different um focal lengths so i can do some better engraving and better cutting so i'm excited to try that out can you put uh, Mike, I might focal on a laser you can yeah but one really? at a time so it's not a bite vocal. <laughs> um, oh, no. And aside from that, Emma's uh, on spring break right now from teaching. So it's just been nice to have her at home. So we've been kind of taking the time to set up some processes and almost like uh, policies and procedures and almost like start forming a, a bit of a wiki of like everything we do so that we can refer to it at any time. Or if she doesn't always need me to be there to hold her hand if she needs to step well, in smart. and help out with something. Um, yeah, it's it, early stages, but at least we're getting information down on paper, which is going to be important for down the line. So pretty stoked. Um, cause Steve, my wife is actually coming on. She's going to be quitting dance, uh, teaching dance, and then she's going to be helping me out and running her business too. So we're trying to get ahead of the, that before the school year is over, but that's been my week. Not a lot of woodworking, uh, just, just working on, uh, not being stressed. <laughs> Mike, what's up with you? Well, went up to the snow last weekend. That was nice. Went up to Tahoe. It was like at least 12 feet high along the sides of the highway it was wild Man, lots of snow i've seen it's, those pictures yeah it's it's crazy and then uh taught my son how to ride his bike this week that was fun uh he picked it up super quick i told nice. him uh if you learn how to ride your bike i'll buy you a dirt bike so <laughs> now i owe him a dirt bike so <laughs> i got my i got my dirt bike fixed up this last week too it's been the weather's getting really nice it's been just fantastic weather the, what outside. technique did you use to have to teach him how to to ride i have this bike? really positive reinforcement and uh, just like <laughs> there you go no i have i have a pretty decently long driveway between my house and my shop so he was it's pretty flat so he he i i held him i held the back of his seat uh yeah. 
And then eventually I just stopped holding it and I didn't tell him and he was just doing it himself. <laughs> and then I, I grabbed it at the end before we fell. And I said, Hey, I, just so you know, you just did that by yourself for uh, that entire pedal. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you just, you did it. You're fine. I was like, so then I just had to teach him how to take off and then stopping. And he, it, we did that for about three, four hours and he had it down and now he's riding every day. So it's uh, that, was, nice. that was a cool, proud dad moment. Um, nice. So I'm going to go buy him a dirt bike. <laughs> he really loves it. He really wants a logical. Dirt bike next step. I mean, I want to, I want to take mine out really bad. Uh, I'm really excited to get him one. Cause it'll be fun, fun thing for me and him to do together. So, um, uh, yeah, other than that, we're just real busy right now. Bought a humongous air compressor for the new CNC that's coming. Big Things, uh, yeah, I had to get an 80 gallon for it is what they recommended for the CNC. Um, it's a big monster CNC. So, um, yeah, we got I got that in. We did Matt and I, one of my guys, we did the electrical for that and the new that the new um air compressor. And then there's some new C, uh dust collectors coming in the shop soon. I'm really excited to talk about those. Uh, uh Steve, I'm doing the opposite of you. I am I like putting as many Adding tools stuff. as possible in there. No, <laughs> it's just getting enough. new buildings. No. <laughs> yeah, when no, it runs yeah, out I, mean, I keep I keep adding more buildings and adding more tools. No, so we got <laughs> But yeah, we got, we got all the electrical done. It was really quick. When, when I did the electrical for the new building, I made it so I, I knew that there was going to be more expansion and growth coming. So I put really oversized um, conduit everywhere. So it'd be very easy to feed new wiring in when I did that. So I thought ahead this time because this is like the fourth time I've redone my shops and I'm tired of having to replace all the stuff. So kind of thought ahead. Um but I uh, did that, went up to the snow, taught my son that. We landed these really cool built-in jobs. Really excited about that. There are these two cabinets. It's a dry bar and a bookshelf. Uh, we're going through all the details on that right now. Those are going to be really cool. Like, I'm really excited about those projects. We're going to have a good time with that. We're doing, we just finished up a desk we're delivering tomorrow. Um, my customer who we do all the custom grounding boxes for, we just delivered 20 to him this week. Uh, they have the big audio expo next weekend in Chicago, and we're hoping to have some really exciting news from that show. They're they're uh, hoping to land distribution on that. Uh, him and his partner are hoping to land distribution with two companies, and that's going to be a absolutely crazy pivot for the company. So uh, we're we're expecting a lot of those to start moving yearly. Now we'll start seeing a lot of those going out of the shop. Um, so yeah, we're delivering the desk tomorrow, doing a dining table right now, doing a another dining table right now. Uh, we got some, one of my interior design clients has all these shelves and a giant mantle we have to do. Um, did a job walk today with, for a customer who Steve, I work, I do, uh, all my furniture stuff. I also do a lot of like salvage lumber projects where, right. um, I hate, I hate when trees go to the landfill. I hate mm -hmm. it. I hate it. So, um, this, this, this client, potential client, they had a, uh, a, a Valley Oak tree come down, which is a white Oak, um, come down on the property and it's 42 inch diameter uh Ooh. they had it cut up into 10 foot segments yeah it's it's huge oh, nice. i can't get it out of there i'm gonna have to hire a company but they want us they want me to get it out of there get it slabbed get it killed turn into furniture or turned into lumber so i can build them a few pieces of furniture for their home so um it's gonna be a cool project um and then yeah that's what's going on what's your what's your favorite there. type of project to work on mike as far well, as for clients for well so for a long time it was tables um mm -hmm. but it's it's really pivoted to i really like making desks and chairs a lot i really like making chairs like i i'm like late right now in this period of time i'm constantly thinking about chair designs and mm. and making new chair designs i really enjoy making chairs um and for some reason, I'm really into desks as well because they're a little bit more complicated than a table because you can <laughs> add cabinet elements to it and stuff. Um, and I just, they're just really, I don't know. It, I feel like you can still do things to them and have them still be a bit original, whereas tables, yeah, there's not a whole lot of originality you can do with tables these days. It's really yeah. tough to have like, like the tabletop is just the tabletop. A desk space but. has more play. Yeah, yeah we can do more stuff like the, the standoffs, the reveals. Yeah, yeah, we can do all kinds of like stuff. The, so the, it's all... the wire... Spots. yeah the, yep. exactly so i've been i've been having fun with desks uh this one we just did is really cool it's like a dual mitered waterfall with a cabinet in the middle so it's a two-person desk um i think that it's cool that you're doing chairs I, I think that that's something that intimidates a lot of woodworkers or, it, or does, it does it does too like it, it's something that uh, you absolutely 
you can yeah. make so many different types. There's a, the, yeah. it seems like that's the piece of furniture that has more potential than anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's only so much it, you can do with a dining table. You know? Right. And it's, yeah. it, you can go so many directions with it. No arms, armrest, no armrest, uh, how you want to do your back. I mean, there's so much you can do with them and they're so fun. And I remember like I was doing my first ones uh, like six, seven months ago and I was really intimidated and then we built it and I was like, Oh, this, this makes a lot. Once you do it, you know, you're like, Oh, this is makes a lot of sense. This just makes sense. And you can start getting real crazy with it. So I think they're fun. There is a lot of joinery involved with them. So, I mean, you could spend as much time on one chair as you do on one table easily. Right, um, yeah. I mean, there's just so many more parts to it, but uh, it's, they're just so fun. Chairs are just such a fun yeah. thing to build and I'm constantly I, sketching them now. So I sketched up a design a couple months ago and I, one of do these it. days I'm going to, I'm going to do it and uh, do it this weekend. Yeah. Right. Do it this weekend. It's, <laughs> uh, it it's going to be, a, it's going to be a busy weekend. I don't know if you know what's going on this weekend. Is it another holiday? Fest? Is it a oh, corn fest? Right. I forgot it's Easter. <laughs> yeah. It's corn yeah, fest. Corn, corn fest, fest here in 2023. Nebraska. 2023. Well, actually, still, you guys are still two years behind the rest of the country, right? It's, tw it's yeah. corn fest. Yeah, it's 2021 <laughs> in Nebraska. <laughs> How, how's the pandemic doing? Yeah, they're still in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh I haven't found toilet paper in weeks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man. No, uh, just be on yeah, the lookout actually, for the shortage. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, in like six terrible. months, houses, oh, they're gonna be so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck buying a house in six months. No, yeah, chairs, chairs are my favorite thing right now. I'm really getting into that, and it's just, it's just a blast. I love making them so. But enough about but, me. Let's ask or let's get into some questions here, real quick. I want to actually, we got a lot of questions this week. We have three. Uh, actually two, <laughs> one two of them is a statement. Two in a statement. <laughs> two in a statement. I mean, one of so I wanted to read this first. I'm going to truncate this, but Max and Mindy Coons, their patrons, they message us in the patron account. Uh, Jason Hibbs at Bourbon Moth put out the video about the oily rag spontaneous combustion. Um, and actually, I think we talked about this last week, but uh, gosh, Lumber Lab Inc. Like two days yeah. after Jason's video came out, his shop burned down. Uh, oily oh, rags. God. Um, and then, uh, Max and Mindy, they didn't mention it, but back in September, they lost their shop and their home to a fire. Uh, it was not oily rags. It was determined by the claims adjuster and the fire marshal to be rechargeable batteries for cordless tools left oh. on the chargers and the cell, it just kept taking power and, uh, it burst and started a fire. They lost everything. So they have fortunately recovered and they're they've got a business at a commercial spot and i'm assuming they have somewhere where they're living because it sounds like things are on a positive note sounds like they're doing but really well now thank it, goodness yeah it sounds like they, it pivoted for them in a good way but oh, i mean obviously horrible. it's very yeah. traumatic it's just a horrible story like losing your home it just sounds frightening to a and, battery um, it's really yeah. yeah yeah to a battery I mean, and we all know it was Ryobi and no, I'm just kidding. We, we don't know. We don't know what battery it was. I wouldn't mention, but, uh, we, but, but the, uh, Master Force. But it's frightening. I mean, he's, I mean, hey. I always in Master Force Hercules. <laughs> um, we, I, I've, oh, I've always left my batteries on the chargers. Uh, um, same, you know, and I always take them off. I'm paranoid. Same. Ever since reading this, I'm, I'm going to start turning nice, mine off. Guy. Yeah, I Steve mentioned this in in the pre-show, but uh, you know, putting them on in a uh, surge protector and pushing the power on that—that's exactly what we're going to do in the shop. I mean, it's yeah. it's scary. Yep. So, it's not really a question. It's more of a PSA, like, hey, this can happen. These batteries can burst into flames. So, I mean, think about these things. So, and then if yep. you don't have a fire extinguisher in your shop, get a oh, fire please. extinguisher in your shop. Yeah. I have one every. Please. We have one every ten oh. feet in the shop. That reminds so. me, I need to go back to what's on my bench. I added something to my shop this week. Is it a big can to poop in? First aid red? kit. Oh, okay. First aid kit. I oh, sliced the crap out of my finger. First... But did you get that uh, red can as well? Did you yeah, I that? got the red can. Yeah, 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 I got that. Yeah, I got it. Anyway, sorry. I don't want to take away from uh, uh, the Coons' uh, story. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you so never know what it. could I mean... happen. And and listen, Jason's yeah. video really brought, brought up a serious topic. I know there's been some people... You, you could say doing a rebuttal to this video and whatnot. We're not going to even mention them, but like the, the fact of the matter is this is brought up. This hasn't been talked about enough. This is a real thing. Uh, you know, Lucas's shop almost burned down. You saw the in, in that video, um, you know, this it's the is thing a thing that can happen. 
absolutely. Nothing can happen. You should be doing anything you can to mitigate that if you can. You know, because a lot of us have our shops attached to our house, so it's not just a house, uh, not just a shop we'd be losing, and you don't want to put your family in danger. So be safe out there. Another good reason to sweep up your dust. Yeah, uh, Dan. More more attacks <laughs> to me. Okay. <laughs> don't ever meet your heroes, kids. Just make it feel bad. <laughs> you got to clean up your shop, and then. Yeah, you your batteries. <laughs> I'm just going to strip my shop down to a, I'm just left with nothing but me in the middle of my shop and a chisel. <laughs> One chisel, any. no, oh, no, 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 yeah. So yeah, I think they're still on there right now. I, I probably yeah, might are to, too. I'm gonna after this off. show, I'm gonna turn it off. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, let me let's get to our first questions here. The first one's from Patrick Genzel. Hey guys, Patrick Genzel here. Hope you guys are all recovering nicely What's from WorkbenchCon. <laughs> I know I have, although I am still having nightmares of Dan and uh, Braden <laughs> snoring, but. Uh, I think I'll manage. So my question is for Steve. Uh, being the the guy on YouTube who is known for getting people into woodworking, uh, that's always been your focus, I'm sure. But is there something in the general maker world that you're itching to learn about or interested in diving into, even if it's just for your own um, fulfillment? So that's all I've got. Hope you guys have a great show and uh, catch yeah, you soon. Yeah, I mean, it, it would definitely have to be for my own fulfillment because it wouldn't work on my YouTube channel. But one thing that I've really been wanting to get into is welding. And it yeah. really, it's something for years Same. I've been kind of like interested in doing. But recently I had this, I made the, I wanted to come up with this art project for my my front yard. We we have a very it's a natural landscape, I guess. We don't have lawns anymore. It's all just like kind of desert landscape. Zeroscape. Exactly. Yeah. And so we had I wanted to make a sculpture. So I had this idea of making these this kind of a fan of bars, I guess, like maybe one inch by one inch bars. And I thought, man, that would be so cool to just have that thing huge in there and just all welded together out of steel. And then I, of course, don't know how to do that. I thought about buying some steel and like, you know, drilling holes and, and is bolting it all together. And I ended up making it out of wood. And this was, I, I guess, probably a year ago or so. And it looks okay, but it's not going to last much longer. You know, it, it was Did never paint meant it? to... I painted it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you you know, you can buy that paint that looks like be... metal, Steve. You know, that's exactly what I did. That oh, is really? exactly what I oh, did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I used that hammered metal finish Russell okay. William has, you know. And this I is stuck Steve Ramsey, in... Dan. He knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> you give me I, a can I apologize. Of spray paint this is one of the videos I haven't seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it turned out really cool. I think it's a cool project. And you can look at it from different directions. And, and it has a really, you know, it didn't do well, very well on my YouTube channel because it's just an art project, you know, kind of very right. self indulgent. But man, would I love to make that thing out of steel. And I would just love to weld it together and just have those pieces just rust. And it would just take on that, you know, rust appearance. Natural just, patina. Ex mm -hmm. yeah that sounds better than rust natural patina i like that <laughs> <laughs> but i would love to do that and so one, one of these days i gotta get into the whole welding business but uh, adding that to my list of many things that i want to do and i just need to get around to doing it yeah awesome that's, that's something i definitely want to i i learned how to weld when i was young my dad had me take classes and i haven't done it in like 15 20 years and it's something i i really want to do when we were at we're, uh maker <clears> camp I got to do a little welding and I was like, man, this is really fun. I'd like to like to have yeah. this, have that in my back pocket for stuff for sure. So useful. Yeah, I yeah took, for sure. I took welding in junior high and I learned how to acetylene weld and stick weld, but I haven't, I haven't done any welding since. And I'd love mm. to someday, but apparently I have too much dust in my shop. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just a explosion a hazard welder. at this point. <laughs> yeah. You get those oily rags and batteries everywhere too. <laughs> Throw those batteries on the oily rag pile. Uh, the, the next question is from Toma. 
Lo mamma! I like that one. Hey guys, my question tonight is for Mike. I have been gifted a project for, um, from my brother to build with him as a bachelor party. We are making a Les Paul like guitar, and I was wondering did you ever finish yours? Do you have any advice for me? As I really don't want to blow my hair hole. <laughs> the body is one piece sipo, the neck will be laminated sipo, sapelli, and padouk, and the fingerboard should be, well, will be ebony. A big project. All right, thank you. Bye, guys. That's a throwback. That's a super yeah. throwback. Yeah, I, I finished that guitar about two and a half years ago. Uh, so uh, it did take me a long time to build. It was one of my first big projects when I got into woodworking. Yeah, I, I touched that F hole. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I it's a beautiful it a guitar. I actually have um, two more guitars that I want to make right now. I, that was a Fender Starcaster clone. I want to build a, uh, a, a Telecaster and I want to build a Gibson, a Les Paul Studio copy. So um, that, they're fun. They're really fun. I need to make time for those projects for myself. I'm doing some other projects for myself right now, but I need to make time for those. I have those ready to go and ready to make. Um, just go really slow, Toma and have a lot of fun with it. Um, I really want to make, I really, one of my goals that I won't be able to do for a while because I'm not there yet. And I have done no, no steam bending is uh, I want to build an acoustic guitar. I really like to build a full acoustic guitar wow. from the ground up. That's one of my, like, I want to do that within the cool. next couple of years. So. It seems like it'd be harder than a chair. <clears throat> yeah, I was kind of thinking it, the same thing. That's pretty yeah, hardcore. harder than a chair. Yeah, it's going to be really tough because you got to do steam bending and you I got, would you can, or you can do a, uh, good. I would love That's to make an electric guitar, but I have no idea how to even play one. So I feel like it wouldn't you, even you be can make legal one, for me to make one. You can make one. Why couldn't you? I've even thought about like offering guitar kits on Etsy so other people That's, could build them. Yep. That's something I've definitely wanted to offer is like guitar <clears throat> bodies. I, I've cut bodies on, on my CNC. I've done bodies for several people multiple times. I have yeah. I have a bunch of files well, I bought from this guy. Uh, I had a, he, there's a, a local guy that I know, he wanted to sw swing by and he brought over his guitar that he made. It was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he does it all with templates and a router. And he wanted to come over and pick my brain about the CNC and stuff. And that got me thinking, I'm like, you could make guitar kits and probably sell those. And people I think would you could totally a, do that. Damn, that would be, oh, I think that's a great idea. That's a fantastic 100%. idea. Yeah. So, okay, Dan, nobody made, do Dan, that. Nobody do what that. What I made, I'm Dan, is a... <laughs> I made a, 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 a work table that goes to my zero zero uh -huh. and it's a new zero zero and it's got dowel pins in it. So you can do your two-sided operations. So you can do your flip oh, operations, very nice, your fronts very nice. and backs. So, and then in the middle of it, there's a part, a little jig that attaches to the pins. I'll send you a picture of it, but it attaches to the pins and it holds the neck piece in place. And also has the pin in place, so you can do the two-sided operation. Yeah, you could do well. like a yeah, you could do a three D car for the neck, right? I mean, that would yeah, yeah. No, that's what I have. Is that's what I have. For, so there's this guy. And I've, that's something I've never done. Is I've never done a two-sided car. But I haven't dived oh, really? into it's, that. I haven't had a need do for it. it it's so really, yeah, yeah, once you do it, like it's fine. It's really not bad, and it really is. Cool. If you just have your, your measurements set up right, just right. Yeah, yeah. that's why you got to like set your your pins the same. So I have a board. The board I have is mm -hmm. big enough to where I can do basically any guitar electric guitar body size on it so i lay the the blank on there in the pins run the job flip it on the pins and it references from that huh. flip i might have so to call really, you and talk about that it's simple the, and time. the guy if you can make money on them i mean there's you can definitely make money on them because i've done it i've made money every time someone comes to me with one i say well i buy the file this guy's who i buy them from the files are like 80 bucks and you get all the 3d cars and it comes in v and it comes in uh aspire v car pro v car profile format um so <laughs> i'm gonna so have to make some cars. adjustments there <laughs> no you, oh yeah right so uh yeah so it comes in the format for that so it's real it's real straightforward and the files this guy nice. makes are awesome too so cool 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 um but yeah that's definitely something i'm when the new cnc comes because i won't have to do tool changes anymore because he's these guitars need like weird flex seven okay. chain seven tool changes for oh them. yeah i can imagine you know, they need a ton of tool changes so um anyways that'll be nice on the new mike machine. is ken still doing guitars ken clevenger he is he's actually coming over next weekend i don't know I what he's got gonna, going i mean 
I was going to say, great. Toma, he hasn't like been that active on, on Instagram lately, but maybe hit him up because like he yeah. started out with like routers and jigs and stuff, and now he's graduated yeah. to CNC guitars, but that's like his brand. Yeah, there's a few, there's a few accounts yeah. on IG that I follow that do guitars, Crimson Guitars, yeah. uh, Shock the Fox, Tyler over at Shock the Fox. Uh, he, he does amazing work. Yeah. Ken Clevenger Guitars, Toma, is my friend. He was my old neighbor, and he's he does... I yeah, don't he's a super cool guy. We all met him. Super yeah. great guy. He's just yeah. like a really great guy. But there, he's coming over next weekend, and him and his family are coming over. I'm I wanted to talk to him about some stuff because I think I'm gonna be able to. He's basically making and selling guitar bodies and making custom yeah. guitars for people. He has his own neck files and stuff like that, so he's a great reference as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's uh, guitars are fun. I really want to make more of them, and I wish I had more time to play them. <laughs> Because I love playing guitar. I wish I had the patience to learn how to play one. Who's got the time? Nobody. Yeah, there's no time, time now. No, do no you guys have the time? time? How long have we been going? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Good one. All uh, right. We're an hour in, Petey Pete. Uh, I think we're actually closer to a little under that. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that's kind of the show unless we got any oh wow thing in it was a good brain. one we want to pick yeah it was great steve it was great having that you on a, that was a lot of fun this i, I yeah. you know I, whenever i get asked onto podcasts they're all different but i think this one has really been the most fun it's really a lot of fun the well, way that means so we much work together you ain't gotta that. lie to us but keep going <laughs> oh, stop, stop. Don't. <laughs> well, Look, let, me I just... you, let me ask you this okay before we go because i think yeah. your audience would like to know this i'll ask each of you this tell me one thing about yourself that they don't know your audience Pete? doesn't know oh i'm trying to think of non-felony ones um <laughs> <laughs> maybe a, maybe a weird hobby something you collect sadly i talk about all my weird hobbies <laughs> my yeah, own collection like, i think that's our problem is like we're very much open books you are yeah, yeah. everything's I mean, out there like i don't know uh yeah everybody knows be, about my pretty... xbox exploits okay well you think about it you come back uh, next yeah no week, i mean and, and I honestly hear, like for I me it's like something. yeah I'm, I'm like i'm really into my i'm really into guitar i've been playing guitar yeah. since i was five you know i've been playing but i don't i don't talk about that much i've been playing guitar forever and and drums and bass and piano i've been playing those since i was 12 and uh I'd really like to play more gu guitar is really my favorite instrument. And I really like drums when I'm trying to get physical, but move around, you get to move a lot more on the drums than you do the guitar. But, um, you write, yeah, music? like not anymore. It's just been years. Like I used to, I, I was in yeah. bands, my all through my twenties, you know, I just did that all the time. That was my thing. And I can play hot cross bonds on the recorder better than anybody. Okay. Set up a YouTube channel. Yeah, but just just hot cross buns. Less. Yeah, <laughs> right. on the recorder. Hot cross buns. Not every video is the same thing. <laughs> uh, played on the recorder. Yeah. Sadly, that'd probably get way more traction than my current YouTube channel. <laughs> That'll be a uh, DDWW plus. That's the, the second <laughs> channel. Yeah, there you go. The plus. It second all channel. comes back home. Start the plus channel. Before we go, Steve, I just wanted to say what a pleasure it was uh, talking to you briefly, as it was at WorkbenchCon. Oh yeah. Uh, it was kind of crazy there, the episode that yeah chaos. i don't know if you heard the episode where we talked about that like yeah that was that was a surreal moment for me when you came up to me and you recognized me and, and i was like, like you're the one who made all that noise crap. about that thing steve ramsey <laughs> steve ramsey knew who i was that was cool because i like the podcast you know yeah i don't think i would have known you if it hadn't been for the podcast. i had no like, idea even after you left even after we kind of parted away as my buddy nick he was like did that just happen I was like, oh, I, I don't, I, yeah, I guess it did. I, I I'm, I'm just, I was flabbergasted. I don't get, I don't get a whole lot of starstruckness, starstruckness. Mm -hmm. That's a word. I'm making it a word right now, but yeah, I was blown away. So thank you for that. Making my whole Thanks. weekend. I appreciate that. I, it was a, it was an interesting and fun time there. I think the best thing about WorkbenchCon was just all the nice people I got to meet. That was your first time. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first time I'd been there. It was, it was Are you good. planning on going back? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go back. It was love it was to see you so there next cool. year and yeah, talk it was, more. It was so cool to talk to everybody. I didn't good. really do much of the other stuff there. There was There's a no really point. awkward keynote address there where You're I right. didn't understand. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, there was a lot of stories about that. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard. <laughs> uh, that was funny though. You, spending time with the people is the best part about it, and everything yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of like, that was oh, yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just kind of whatever. But if you ever um, find yourself on the East Coast in uh, October, you should go to Maker Camp. Oh, yeah, I've had fun. a lot of people. I've had a lot you of people. You would absolutely to to love Maker Camp. Yeah, 
that's more hands on it's it's right real yeah fun. yeah cool anyway well it's it was a pleasure you. having you on but, really great thank, you. thank so you guys for inviting me i really appreciate that it was really Please, fun talking anytime. to you guys for sure this is yeah. a, a lot of i mean if you're you're down for it we, we we do always have a short list of people that are like, if we ever need to fill in or we just want an extra body yeah. or yeah, we yeah, miss someone we 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 put you on a short list way to ask him on the show pete because <laughs> uh, well, he had mentioned that he might what if he back. said no what if he said no <laughs> like, nah, we're, i'm good he's going you guys on later. the list <laughs> i, I hope you recorded my audio on your end i'm out of here <laughs> I ain't doing this shit. you guys got this right okay bye <laughs> no all right let's get out of here steve thank you so much for coming on the show we really do appreciate you coming on uh you you appreciate it. It so much. a staple for the uh woodworking community so thank you so much we'll be back next week we will talk to you guys soon. Everyone have a great week. Thanks for sharing the show. Check out everyone on YouTube and everywhere where it's relevant. Check them out. Give everyone some love. Thanks for everything. Doodles. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.